All right, good evening, seventh grade. <clears throat> I'm uploading this video to go over your test review. So for investigation number eight assessment, um, test basically looks like this. It's gonna show several questions on here. Um, and again, it's just because I can't put all the questions in just the way the test has it, at least to have you input answers as easy as possible. So, basically every question is required. Um, I don't think it's gonna let you submit the test until you answer every question, which makes that a lot easier for you um, to not forget anything. So it starts off by having you put your first name, your last name and class period. Um, again, I plan on importing all these to an Excel spreadsheet to be able to look over answers and go over things. Um, so those are the first three technical questions of the test. Um, the next one, which becomes the first problem, is in six parts. So the questions are all the same. It's all yeses and nos. And it's asking you to answer yes or no. Yes is the factor directly influencing ocean currents. Or no, this factor does not uh, directly influence ocean currents. Um, so the article that you read on ocean currents should have a lot of information in there. Um, again, when we look at something, is it a global thing or is it more of a locational thing? Uh, if it's more of a global thing, then yes, it's going to be a factor. If it's just more of an individual location, it's not going to be a factor for global ocean currents. So you have six of those to answer yes or no. Uh, let's see, your next problem has to do with... Uh, the water cycle, okay? You have the four main components. Um, oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, each one of the questions uh, as to whether or not it's a factor, it's at the very end of the question. So you'll see it located right by the little red asterisk that makes it required. Um, so the next question kind of has something very similar. So it asks you to identify the four parts of the water cycle that are already listed there. Um, it is evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and uh, collection or runoff. And uh, they ask you whether or how this step in the water cycle occurs. Uh, does it depend on energy transfer or does it depend on gravity? So energy transfer, obviously there's some type of motion of particles, uh, whereas gravity, it's just, does it go from point A to point B in its transformation? Does it take place with energy transfer or does it just simply take place with gravity? Um, shouldn't be too hard to figure that one out if you think about how each step works. Um, then in the next problem, you have a picture of the water cycle. And I tried to find a good water cycle that kind of relates to what we talked about. Um, and it just asks you to discuss the limitations of the water cycle uh, based on the model that I gave you, which has the four main components and how the main water cycle that we talked about is different from the activity that we did in class. Um, I'm asking you to give at least three examples of that. Um, so again, you can list each one. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, if you want to talk about each one, that's fine too. Um, and then the last two problems, which is kind of one problem uh, broken into two parts. I put the same information in each question. Uh, the first part, uh, you basically have two cities with bar graphs and line graphs that talk about the precipitation in each city and the average temperature in each city. So very similar to the activity that we just got done with. Um, one is right on a lake and the other is further away from the lake. So you need to look at the temperatures and the precipitation. And the first question is, do these two cities represent what you learned from the last investigation. So the video that I shared with you earlier today, 
Um, does that reflect what's happening in these two cities here? Um, so it is or it isn't, and then why or why not? So I want you to comment on both temperature and precipitation. Um, and the last portion of that is, do you think that these group of students provided enough sufficient evidence to support the claim that they wrote in the picture? Um, yes or no. Um, so again, I have a picture of the problem on the test. You just need to identify if they supported that claim. And um, again, what could they do to improve or make it more valid um, and improve the activity that they did? All right, so that is your review. Um, again, the test will open up probably tomorrow morning. Uh, you'll get a notification when it does. Uh, I'm not able to schedule it. Um, I need to figure out some more information on how to schedule things like that. Um, but again, I plan on being up tomorrow morning and that'll be the first thing that I do is to uh, get that logged, down, logged on and so you can complete the test and submit it. And once you are done with that, uh, that is it for science for the week. Um, other than that, just follow the challenges and I'll look to set up some Zoom conferences probably by class period. Um, so pay attention to that and I hope you have a good week. I will talk to you guys later.